Well, I think the other thing that's that's uh, left movies is the taboo. And yeah. this is what I've noticed a lot in terms of there used to be a kind of movie that was extremely well made, sometimes with stars, sometimes made by an auteur that really pushed buttons and yeah. was dirty, was offensive. Of course, you could say De Palma is an example of this. Um, certainly Lars von Trier is an example of this kind of bad boy directors, mm-hmm. Paul Verhoeven to a degree. I think Kashimike. Kashimike. Yeah. And I remember um, The Provocateurs. The Provocateurs. And I do think that uh, maybe the last one that I've seen was L, the Paul uh-huh. Verhoeven movie with Isabel Huppert, where he could not get the funding. It was, it was basically set originally, I think, in Boston. It was set in America. And he could not get a single A list actress to commit. To that movie, so he had to rethink it and shoot it in France with a with a uh, mm-hmm. for, with a, as a Bill Hooper, yeah. who was nominated for an Oscar for that performance. So, um, but I, that's what I feel missing. I feel like that is, I don't know. Maybe maybe you see it apologetically in, in a raunchy R rated studio comedy, but even then, you, they don't. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I I keep thinking that probably Animal House now would be about. 24 minutes long if it was released into our world now because some of the funniest scenes in it are just so politically incorrect that you couldn't do you couldn't do the whole uh, sequence at the black knight club where they go of course uh you couldn't do the people tend to forget there's a scene where a character that we assumed was 18 is actually i think 13 in the movie the minor and so i mean there's all this stuff here and especially the objectification of the topless pillow fights and the I don't know if you could make that movie just as much as I don't know if you could. couldn't, but also those movies are very much commenting. Humor is very much of its time and of the moment. And, you know, it's interesting when people look back at movies and go, well, that's not funny. How could people have have thought that was funny? Well, Blazing Saddles, I mean, they, they were brilliant to set it in 1874 because it allowed you to do 70s really comment on 70s racism in a way that everybody could laugh at the racist and laugh that, you know, and I think that Jordan Peele cracked it in Get Out when the guy, you know, he says, I wish I would have voted right. for Obama for a third term. Right. And you know he's full of shit. And then they right. turn out to be the worst people ever. It's like he he was able to make a movie that talked about race in a way that we all could discuss Correct. race because we're talking about this character. And that's when a genre movie is great. But you could, you know, it's kind of inconceivable that 30 years from now, if someone would look back at Get Out and go, wow, how could people have thought that that movie was way more, you know, it's, yeah. it's just, it, movies are very much a product of their time. Of course they are. And yeah. commenting on the culture. It's like, I always see people go, you, you know, there's like, there's at the end of the decade, they'll look back at the horror movies and go, well, let's re-examine these horror movies. And they go, well, right. The Ring wasn't that scary. And The Exorcist is kind of silly now. Hostel's just... And of course it's not scary. The Haunted House is never as scary the second time through. If you look back at every comedy, you know, my parents would be like, oh, Amos and Andy was so funny. My dad showed us this movie called Check and Double Check. And we sat there. Even my parents were like, whoa, we remember this being really funny. But they're like, the Kingfish probably. I mean, it is blackface. It Mm -hmm. is malapropism. It is just, you can't, I mean, my brothers and I, it was like we were watching the producers, you know, like the audience, the producers watching Springtime for Hitler. Yeah. Um, but move that humor is very and all these things. I've had fights with people now who say you can't enjoy Revenge of the Nerds. Oh yeah, it's, because it's so rape. Tired, it supports rape culture, and you're like, well, what are you talking about? I mean, am I going to betray my 11 year old self that thought that that was the funniest movie ever, and we loved the nerds coming up with invention on spying on the girls in the locker room? You look at that now, and you sound like you are a monster for even having had enjoyed it. As a child. And it's just this idea that are we all supposed to present these weird, clean versions of ourselves that aren't real, that aren't true, that we're not human with sexual desires and flaws, and that and that something we enjoyed, or we, uh, that if we don't have this demonstration of shame for things that we enjoyed in our past that now in the lens of 2019 are inappropriate and not okay... It's like, are we bad people for enjoying that or for still liking that? It's it's crazy. It's like it's it's almost like this thought police that people are now making you you're not allowed to enjoy that because then now you're actually you're a rapist if you like Revenge of the Nerds. In fact, people have told me, Eli, don't even talk about that movie. Now I'm not going to sit here and defend the film. I mean, yeah, there's like a date rape scene in the movie, but I loved that movie as a kid, and I still so now there's this weird thing of people aren't even allowed to talk about what they like anymore. 
You need to be re-educated, comrade. That's what needs to happen. You need to have your re-education fulfilled. 